Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I'd like to introduce you to the latest in my videos on research and development tools for iOS. This time, I'm going to show you a new tool for generating code that can present SF symbols in your Xcode projects in either SwiftUI or UIKit. If this is something you're interested in, then keep watching. SF symbols were introduced during WWDC 2019 and are a big present for us developers. Apple basically gave us free symbols to use in our apps, and it's really easy to use them. With SF Symbols 2.0 and 2.1 being introduced in WWDC 2020, we got even more possibilities to show our beautiful icons in our apps. Apple provides an SF Symbols app that allows you to browse, copy, and export any available symbol. The app can be downloaded from this link, and I'll leave it in the description below here and it's available for macOS 10.14 and later. The app allows you to browse the symbols by category using the categories list on the left hand side. And this category shows all the new ones introduced in 2020. It displays them in the selected weight, which is ultra light here, but you can choose to change that and display them in whichever weight you like. It also has the option to display the new colored SF symbols that were introduced in 2020 and that can be displayed by enabling this multicolor option. What SF Symbols does not do is show you how you can use these symbols in your UI kit or SwiftUI project, and that's where this great tool made by Muhammad Imthatula, and my apologies to Muhammad if I'm mispronouncing his name, and he goes by SkyDevs on Twitter, and I'll leave a link to that Twitter account and the apps App Store link in the description below as well. The app is called Swimbles, and it's available for Mac, iPhone and iPad. It's free to try with only one limitation and I'll get to that in a minute. But the bonus is that whatever subscription model you choose, whether it be free or subscription, you get access to all three apps for that one price. I'm going to start with and spend most of the amount of time on the Mac app because that's what I use most. I'll introduce you to the iPhone and iPad versions later, but the interface on all three devices is intuitive, and once you discover the feature set on one of them, you'll be able to discover it quickly on the others as well. And the reason I use it mostly on the Mac is because I code on the Mac. And the one feature that Swimbles has that the Apple app doesn't have is code generation. Swimbles will generate the code for you so that you can use an SF symbol in your Swift project, whether you're using UIKit or SwiftUI. Not only that, you'll be able to apply modifiers to the symbol and adjust it until your desired result is achieved, and then just copy the code into your project. So let me show you how that works. The left-hand side of Swimbles is very similar to the SF Symbols app itself. You have your categories in the list on the left, and tapping on a category displays this set of symbols. So you can check what's new and in, introduced in 2020, or just the new symbols that have a color option or by a specific category like this weather one. The panes are adjustable to meet your needs too. Like SF symbols, the color wheel will turn on or off the representation of the colored symbol that was introduced in 2020. If off, it shows the template view rather than the original image. The favorites icon on the toolbar marks any symbol that you have favorited and to favorite a symbol, all you'd have to do is just right click and choose Add Favorite. In the code pane, you get SwiftUI code in one tab and the UIKit version in the other. Now, is there any wonder why I like SwiftUI over UIKit? Look at this mess of code. To be fair, the UIKit code is how you would create an image view in code using an SF symbol. SwiftUI is all done in code, but much easier. For multicolored images, you may prefer to have it displayed on a gray background, and this might help you determine how the symbol will look in light versus dark modes. I prefer to keep mine in black. Each time you tap on a new symbol, the code changes. Notice when I tap on a non-colored symbol, the rendering mode of dot .original is removed, and this is what I like about this app. Simply through experimentation, you can find out things that you might not know. Let's scale back this folder icon to 1x, and then I'll apply a font size and weight modifier. 
As changes are made to the modifier, the preview changes as well. Well, now that I know the size, let me, for design's sake, increase the preview size. Let's look at some other modifiers. Let me choose a background color, and it defaults to green, but I can change that to, say, red. I'm going to add a foreground color. How about yellow? Next, I'll add some padding, but nothing's changed. I see the modifiers in the code, but why no change? Well, in SwiftUI, order matters. And you can change the order of a modifier here by right-clicking and choose Move Up or Down if it were in between other modifiers. Or you can simply drag and drop. So I'm going to move mine up to the top where it should be. And that's another lesson to be learned in SwiftUI that you can discover through Swimbles. How about some rounded corners? 10 looks good. Let's add a little rotation. 15 degrees is the default, but I want mine tilted the other way. So let me go to minus 15 degrees instead. The power of Swimbles is that you have the ability to select different symbols and see what they look like. All modifiers remain, so you can find the exact symbol that you want. Now all I have to do is tap copy code and it's copied to my clipboard, ready to insert into my Xcode project. I can copy the Swift UI or the UIKit versions. Now, remember I told you that there was a single limitation? Well, unless you have a subscription, you can't copy the code. You have to retype this into your code project. Well, that's the basics of Swimbles for Mac OS. A very useful tool, particularly if you're just starting out with Swift UI and need to get a better understanding of how view modifiers are applied. Keep in mind that this is version 1 and the developer is motivated. You can help him out and help shape the app as he continues development. You can go to the link provided in the description below and add your own enhancements requests. Now before I leave you, I want to give you a glimpse into what the app looks like on an iPhone and an iPad. Let's take a look at the iPhone app first. If you tap the All button, you see the entire category list. But you can also scroll through and browse the list of symbols, and you do have the ability to search and filter by name. You can long press to add or remove a symbol from your favorites list, but unfortunately at this time those favorites are not shared across devices. Perhaps that would be a good enhancement request. Tapping a symbol adds it to the preview pane, and like in the Mac app, you can increase the scale for previewing. From here, you can tap on the modifier segment to start your customization. Tapping the add modifier will bring up the list of possible modifiers, and like the Mac app, you have some control over each one. Let's more or less replicate what we did on the Mac. First, font weight, and we'll change it to semi-bold. Next, we'll add a background color of red. We'll follow this with a foreground color of yellow. And now I'll add some padding. And we see, as we did in the Mac version, nothing changes. We need to change the location of the padding. I'll just tap the pencil button to get into edit mode. And now I can drag the modifier to the top. I'll add a corner radius, and the default is fine. And finally, a rotation, and we'll change that to minus 15 degrees instead. And as with the Mac app, you can go to the code segment and view and or copy the code for either Swift UI or UI kit. And tapping any other symbol will maintain the modifiers just as the Mac app does. The iPad version is very similar to the iPhone one. The categories, however, are displayed optionally on the left. Other than that, favoriting, adding symbols, scaling, and adding modifiers is done exactly the same way. So I'm just going to speed through that same example that we've done twice already.
Overall, no matter which version you use, this could be a very useful app to add to your toolbox, certainly worth downloading and trying out. The real plus for me is that it's available on all three platforms and it generates the code for you. It means that wherever I am, I can find the symbol that I need for my application and experiment with modifiers until I get the desired look, either on my Mac, my iPhone, or my iPad. And with the paid subscribe version, I can copy that code directly and paste it into my Xcode project. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.